5 a.m. like, not slept, having my fag indoors. I know I shouldn't, but I have the air freshener going every hour. I hear this knocking at the door. I think, who the bloody hell is that? Paula won't be awake. And if she's knocking at my door now, it can only mean she's finally left that husband of hers. Now, <laughs> I love her, but I'm thinking, I can't be bothered dealing with that at 5 a.m. If it is that, I think I'll wait a bit. Well, they start knocking again. Louder now and for longer. So, like the mug I am, I put out my fag, open the door, expecting Paula in her dressing gown, which needs a wash, but no. It's not Paula. It's him. The neighbour from across the street. Curtis. Stood there in his work stuff. Bit drunk. Opened the door. And he just stares at me. Barely blinks. I go, can I help you? He says, can I have a fag? I have to light it for him. His hands are that shaky. After he finishes his cigarette, he looks at me and goes, you scare me. <laughs> Dead serious. I'm thinking, me? Scary? I've never bloody spoken to him, let alone done anything to scare him. Also, this one has rocked up 5am at my doorstep looking like a serial killer. Scary. <laughs> well, he is drunk, so maybe he's just had a few too many, I'm thinking. I go, what do you mean I scare you? He asks for another fag. I give him one. We don't say anything for a bit longer. It's not bad looking, is Curtis. Nice jawline, nice hair. His wife's pregnant, I can tell. I brought Curtis inside after a while. I think if he's gonna murder me or whatever, he might as well be in the house. He says he's hungry. Well, I had some crisps in the kitchen, so I go and get them, and when I come back, he's sitting in Joseph's old chair holding that nice photo of Joseph and me in America, one I keep on the side. He doesn't look up at me, he just stares at this picture, gripping it really hard. All I can say is, cheese and onion, okay? Looking at me now, he goes, you and her next door watch me every day. Do you think I haven't seen you? <sighs> I just rattle these crisps around. He looks at the picture, back at me. I bet you wank over me, don't you? I just stand there with the crisps. He grabs his crotch through his pants and goes, if I let you, would you touch it? I say, you're very drunk, I think you should leave. I say it twice. But he looks down now, only when he looks up at me, he's crying. <laughs> I never know what to do when people cry. And fuck knows what you do when your neighbour, who you've never spoken to, starts crying in your living room at 5am, cupping himself. You scare me, he says again. I'm terrified that one day I'm going to wake up and look in the mirror and I'll be like you, some horned up old creep, just so... nothing. You blend in. Never been anything, have you? Just been on nice holidays, got your wages, been good. You're terrifying, do you know that? He... Puts our photo down. Wipes his tears on his shirt. <laughs> I'm still standing there with this bloody pack of crisps, nearly... shaking. Tells me he's gonna leave. Tells me, I was born for more than this. Says he's gonna leave his house, his wife, his job, 
just go. He gets up and refluffs the cushion, apologises for messing it up, which I thought was nice, and goes. That was nearly a year ago. He's never spoken to me since. I saw him this morning, walking to work with his briefcase, his usual routine. Not left yet. 